Do we not realize how special of a season this one Auburn Tiger had a year ago? Also, Zepp Jasper joins the show to talk about this offseason for Auburn basketball. And pull out the brooms, folks. The Auburn Tigers swept South Carolina. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. It's a Monday, so we are joined by Lindsey Crosby, the Auburn banker himself, and we will recap that Auburn baseball sweep against South Carolina later in the show as well as hear from Zepp. But look, Lindsey, I'm doing this new stat of the day thing on Twitter, and we're writing an article on each stat at AuburnDaily.com. But this one from last week I thought was pretty crazy. In 2021, Keandre Jones, offensive guard, Keandre Jones, he was in pass protection on 416 plays, and he did not allow a sack. Really? So just the, you know, the, the narrative, right, is this offensive line stinks. The offense isn't going to be able to do anything because of the offensive line. And while they may not be great at run blocking, the pass protection, I think, will be able to be there regardless of who wins the quarterback job. Yeah, I don't think I realized he was quite that good. And it kind of goes back to the reason, one, why you're doing this out of the day. Uh, but, yeah, no, we we the concern here is, like, should not be on – pass blocking in the offensive line. And I think a lot of people have the impression of the first two years of Bo Nix's career. And they don't look at last year, Bo being more successful statistically, and they don't attribute any of that to the offensive line. They assume it was all Bo uh, doing different things, having grown, and he did grow and mature as a player. But a significant portion of that was just also the offensive line blocking better for him and yeah. then him being better prepared to make things happen when the bro- the blocking finally broke down. Yeah, yeah. And so you look at the interior offensive line, which let's be clear here, it's easier to pass protect as a center or a guard than it is a tackle, significantly. Mm-hmm. One, who you're going up against. Two, you've got more bodies around you, and so there's just more mass and more things for the defensive line to navigate through. But still, impressive. 416 dropbacks and you don't allow a sack. He did allow 10 quarterback hurries uh, last season, but once again, over 14 plays, I think you take that. I absolutely think you take that. So what does this mean for the offensive line moving forward? I think one is you have to build out, right? So we know Nick Brahms will be the starting center. Doesn't matter they didn't participate in spring. He's done like 30 springs because he's been here so dang long. He may have blocked for Bo Jackson. I don't know. He's been here a long time. And so you've got those two guys. This is a Brandon Council podcast. He's going to be the other guy. You'd have to think. I don't get the vibe that he really lost his job by not participating in spring. I I just don't think that's a thing for for him to come back. You know, there had to be conversations with him and the coaching staff. So I I think that's there. It's the tackles. It has always been the tackles, it seems like. It will continue to be the tackles moving forward. But look, this is one thing that we just don't want to talk about. But like Broderie's hand was not good in pass protection. He just wasn't. And so I think being able to push the reset button with Bro Broham, and I like Broham. I think he's great. I wish him nothing but luck in the NFL um, because I think he's got I think he's got some traits that some teams may give him a chance on late in draft or possibly free agency. But the uh, the fact that Zaire was as impressive apparently as he was over the spring should give you some hope. And that right tackle spot, do you want to give it to Troxel? And if that's the case, to me, there's like still just one glaring weakness in all of this, and it's probably the right tackle spot. But all of the quarterbacks are right-handed, and so it's like, all right, you know, maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough for you to do that. And you've got tight end depth, tight ends that are willing to block, throw in a chip block, or, you know, you got running backs now. Uh, so I, I think the pass protection side of it is going to be okay. It, Maybe I'm looking at this through orange and blue glasses. Maybe I'm being too positive here in April as we discuss this, but I'm not expecting any transfers, right? I, I think it would be silly at this point 
to expect a transfer offensive lineman this offseason. So I think what you got on the roster is, is what you get going into the spring, Lindsay. Yeah, and I was going to bring up Zaire as the first guy who I think is going to be a big addition to this offense when he comes in. So. You talked about, I think it was two weeks ago, about his size, just how he fits more of that prototypical uh, offensive tackle mold, the, you know, the the taller guy, bigger wingspan. I mean, he's 6'7", 312. And so the whole big thing there was just he, he had been injured. And then before that, he's just kind of newer to football. Uh, I think the right tackle spot, kind of like you mentioned, you'll, you might see a couple different guys play there. You're definitely going to see some tight ends be involved in that, whether it's a chip, whether it's a true double team, things like that. And like you said, being on the quarterbacks, like not on their blind side, they can see that you can mitigate that somewhat. It's different than if your left tackle was bad and right. the quarterback can't see that coming. So I think they'll be good. Uh, I think they'll be better. And then the the question that I have is how well can they do a good enough job run blocking? Like, can they, can they just get it to the point where Tank Bigsby has a chance to showcase his talent and pick up extra yards? Uh, and and I think that's the big unknown for me. I actually feel pretty good about them in pass protection. Yeah. I'm looking at this now, and it's saying that Broderi's hand did not give up a sack last year. That's crazy. That is crazy. But also just looking at Killian Zaire's numbers for pro football focus. He played 176 snaps, or pass blocked, excuse me, on 176 snaps. He did not give up a sack. He did give up um, two quarterback hits and six pressures. So a little bit higher of a number than you'd possibly want to see. But, I mean, over the course of a whole season, like if Auburn does that at his left tackle spot, you're probably okay with that. Yeah, I mean, no sacks, a couple hurries and hits. And and in the SEC, you're not going to play a tackle spot and not give up pressures to some of these incredibly athletic edge players of an Alabama, of a Georgia, of a Texas A&M, things like that. So – I'm not incredibly bothered. I think part of that too is I'm looking at what we saw in spring. I'm looking at some of the natural growth that we're expecting from these guys as they enter year two of this offensive system uh, and and kind of projecting a a bit and giving him a little more credit for work he hasn't necessarily done yet. But, you know, I do think he's going to be fine at left tackle. The question just is right. And, you know, is, is Troxel the guy? Do you have to plug somebody else in there? I mean, you've got a guy like a, Redshirt freshman Garner Langlo. I think he's still a little young, 6'6", 300. Obviously, he's only been on campus for a year. You rarely see freshman offensive linemen play, but I think he's an option at tackle uh, if something happens with Troxel or somebody else. Yeah, and Langlo um, Langlo cracked the two deep, so um, Mm -hmm. maybe there's some upside there. Here it is. Broham, he did not give up a sack, but they have him giving up 21 pressures, so that's it. That's and just about good. a full season, right? Like it was close mm-hmm. to a full season of starting for him. For, for Broham, it was 12 games, so 473 snaps. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. there you go. There you go. All right. Hey, Zep Jasper had a lot of interesting things to say about his game, what he's working on this offseason, what the team is working on, and also maybe a little transfer nuggets. There is um, there's a big recruit on campus today, and Zep is involved with that. So stay tuned right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the protein bar that looks and tastes like a candy bar. Absolutely delicious. They've got a ton of different flavors. Go to Built.com. You can check out all the different flavors of Built Bars. Also Built Puffs. Honestly, guys, I like the Puffs more. I I think they're good. They're they're marshmallowy, packed with protein. They keep you full. Um, You dip them in your coffee in the morning. You will not regret it. Most Built Bars contain around 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They keep you full. What's not to like about that? Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off. That is at Built.com. Also, today's show brought to you by Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens has a product called AG1. I take it every morning, and I've been doing it about two weeks now, and it's it's a game changer. It's a game changer. I don't get headaches anymore. I feel refreshed. I feel relieved. And all of the things that are in this concoction, I called it a potion last week. Um, it's, 
it, it changes the game. They've got over 7,000 five-star reviews, and they're recommended by professional athletes and trusted by leading health experts um, all over the place. So be sure to check it out. Go to athleticgreens.com to check out everything they have going on. But right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D. It's like a little dripper. You drip a drop or two into your uh, Athletic Greens in the morning. And five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college. You take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Join for the first time in, in way too long, Auburn guard Zepp Jasper. Zepp, miss chatting with you on a weekly basis, man. How's the uh, how's the offseason been treating you? Offseason been treating me pretty good, man. I'm glad to be back on here. You know, I miss it. Of course, man. Of course. No, we'll, we'll link up several times over the course of the way too long offseason. So what's it been like so far? Well, we're about a month or so Um after after the season kind of came to an end for you guys, what's been the process like? How do you kind of move on from a really impressive season? You guys went home a little bit earlier than you expected to, uh, and now uh, I'm sure you're you're balancing that while also preparing for next year. What's that like? Um, well, the off season, you know, we took a week off. You know, after we got the loss against Miami, yeah, and then you know we came back with the with the mindset of. You know, we're going to go hard for three weeks. Um, last Friday was our last last day of tough workouts. Um, we, we do this thing called a circuit with Coach, um, Coach D. And um, it's a weight circuit. You, you never stop with what you're doing. And, um, you know, it gets you bigger, stronger, faster, sore. And uh, we actually been doing basketball work. We actually been doing basketball workouts, basketball right. workouts with the coaches too. So, like, we do the circuits. And then we do the basketball workouts. And I think this has been really good for us, you know, after the season. What kind of off-season goals do you have? You mentioned getting bigger. I mean, is that something that you would like to to bring into the next season? Um, my off-season goal is, you know, to get bigger, stronger, better make passes, better make reads. But my biggest thing um coming into next year um is being aggressive. That's my biggest thing in coming in. Um, you know, I didn't take a lot of shots. You know, I held back. You know, from a, from a lot of people. You know, with, with us having a you know a great great players like Walker, Jabari, Wendell, right. KD. But um, this year, I look to to be the person I am, the, the aggressive on offense and on defense, um, to show people that I can score and and can play defense at the same time, not just play defense but I can score how does that play into practice and preparation because I mean that's a that's a mindset thing right or is that something that you have to emulate in practice over the course of the offseason well I always think it's a mindset thing you know only you can stop you nobody else can stop you no matter who is if it's the coach on um, the players if you got that in your mind that nobody can stop you well you can't be stopped you see shots go in they're going to always go in, no matter who's in front of you, no matter if it's the best defender. And, um, you know, I always had that offensive mindset in my game, but I also could, you know, be held back and, you know, shy away from it with my teammates because I got great teammates. I'm the one who who would take those responsibilities, you know, to take a step down to be to be great for my teammates. That's what I like to do. I like to be there for my team, no right. matter what I have to do. So if you take on a more aggressive role, what does that make the offense look like? Because, I mean, you, the three guards, all you guys are coming back, KD and Wendell, they're pretty aggressive offensively as well. So what does that balance look like, or is that something you guys have to work on? Um, well, I think with all, all three of us being aggressive, it, it, it dictates the defense. Um, it dictates how they guard us. Yeah. And, um, you know, we really haven't talked about the freshmen, you know, coming in yet, but – we shall see, you know, how they fit in with the players we have now, which I believe they're going to fit in perfectly with us. But, um, you know, the the four the the big man, the four man, Johan, 
Um, I think he's going to be a great player. And um, I can't wait to play with him. Can't wait to see him in practice, get the bond with him, get to jail with him, you know, and just see how, you know, how you take things in. Yeah. Have have you talked to Johan Traore yet? I mean, a huge get, you know, Jabari and and uh, Kessler enter the draft. And it's like, man, where's the size going? How How's Auburn going to kind of get big down low again? It's like, okay, that's the first step is getting – a guy like Traore, I mean, his high school stuff is ridiculous. Like, it is crazy. The dude seems like he can do a little bit of everything. Oh, yeah. It seems like he can do a little bit of everything. He stretched the floor. Um, he can run the floor. Um, he he kind of got a different game than Jabari. Sure. Um, but, you know, that pickup was great. He's going to be a great addition. And like I said, I can't I can't wait to, you know, get that mindset in him of that dog mentality. My, my thing is to get – dog mentality until people you know when they first get to this program um to play play free play aggressive but also know we're not backing down from no one you're gonna come you're gonna come in here and you're gonna learn you're gonna learn from us you're gonna learn from the older guys and learn that we want to come in every practice every game and play as tough as nails yeah so we all see jabari and kessler i mean what they did on the floor and obviously they both had amazing seasons and hopefully they get taken high in the NBA draft. But what, what's the stuff that is going to be hard to replace that we don't get to see Zep, the stuff in practice, the stuff in the locker room, who, who has to step up and fill those certain types of roles? Well, with this team, we're going to have next year, you know, like I said, we got a lot of older guys. Yeah. Um, coming back. Um, I just think, you know, with Jabari and Walker leaving, stuff is going to be taken more serious. You know, Jabari, he was the best player in college basketball last year. Right. Walker was one of the, was one of the best shot blockers in the game last year. Maybe yeah. was the best. And um, that can't be replaced. Those two people can't be replaced. It's like you're going to have to change your style. Um, mm. Who are you going to go to in late games? Jabari, was, he was a great closer. Walker was a person you can always count on no matter what. Um, no matter if it was on the court or off the court. He was a great dude. Um, great positivity. And um, it's like, who are we going to go to in the locker room to have that positivity? To have to have a person we can count on. And, um, you know, I just think I'll take that role and, you know, having that positivity in the locker room and, you know, just getting guys together. A lot of speculation, Zep, on the portal. Obviously, last season you went into the portal. Now you get to see all the portal madness happening from the other perspective, folks potentially coming in. What has that been like to you? I mean, do you track or are you told when Auburn goes after certain guys or or is this just kind of something you're finding out when we find out? Um, well, sometimes I find out when y'all when y'all find out, but sometimes I, I kind of like track it. Um and stuff like that because I want to see who's coming in, who might be coming in. And, um, you know, we're looking for additions to, to replace Walker and Jabari and Devin Cambridge. So, you know, we need key pieces. We need pieces to get over the hump. You know, as last year, we didn't get over that hump against Miami. So we need we need guys who are ready to come in and, and play Auburn basketball and be great players and be unselfish teammates and teammates that want to win. So I always look in the portal and look at guys who can fit in with Auburn basketball. How many portal guys do you think um, you think Auburn fans should expect to come in? Maybe two or three. Two, I say maybe two. Two, maybe two. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're they're looking at uh, all the bigger guys. You know, Broom, the kid from Moorhead State. It seems to be um, one of them, but. Uh, a big recruit, as we record this Sunday afternoon, it'll go up Monday, but a big recruit in town today, Julian Phillips. Um, what do you think about a guy like that? How, how, how are our chances with a guy like him? Well, I think our, our chances are 50-50. Um, he's a great player. He does a lot, he does a lot of great things. You know, um, he's actually connected with my AU team, Upper Star Southeast, um, who's coached by Kurt Wheeler. And... Um, you know, I heard he's a great kid, a guy who wants to win, a guy who wants to make the make the leap to the NBA. And um, I just hope we get the kid because, you know, I love his game. I feel like he can have that dog mentality in him. I feel like he won't back down from no one. And I feel like he'll love, 
you know, Auburn. I feel like this would be a good place for him. Right. No question. No question. Zep, thank you so much for your time, as always, man. And uh, enjoy the rest of the offseason. We'll link up again maybe next month sometime. No doubt. Appreciate you. Thank you so much to Zep Jasper. We will jump into Auburn baseball sweep. Hope you got your brooms out as Lindsay jumps back into the conversation. But first, betonline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs as NBA is heating up, as well as Major League Baseball. Um, speaking of Major League Baseball, I beat Lindsay in fantasy this week, so that's hilarious. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Check it all out at Bet Online, where the game starts. Today's show also brought to you by Fetch Me. Fetch Me Home Delivery is the most convenient way to get your family's meal delivered to you whenever you want. If you're in the Auburn, Opelika, or Lee County area, and you just don't feel like going to pick up dinner or lunch, you're stuck in the office, you can't get out, Fetch Me is the easiest and most cost-effective way to do it. And it's Auburn folks bringing it to you. It's local people. They actually hire these folks. They're not on contractors, so they get to control the process. And you know that these fetchers are being taken care of. So check it all out at fetchmedelivery.com. Also, they now deliver alcohol with the new state laws for the state of Alabama. You can check that out at fetchmealcohol.com. They'll have it to your door in no time. Fetchmedelivery.com or fetchmealcohol.com. Lindsey Crosby, Auburn baseball. You got your broom out? You got the broom out for the sweep? First sweep in three years? That seems so long. I would not have guessed that going into it, but... Hey, they found a way to get it done. Yeah, and it's if you think about it, last year, tough season. Butch has talked about that. 2020, you lost most of the season, so right. 2019. But no, uh, what we saw this weekend, a lot of, uh, whether it's coming from behind, scoring late, uh, pitching, sticking into it, and then you saw a lot of two specific guys in the bullpen, Carson Skipper and closer Blake Burkhalter. Uh, those three guys throw all three games. They tried to do different things. They tried to hand it off to, to other guys, but bad stuff kept happening. Yeah, and in the end, it all came back to Skipper and Burkhalter coming in here and, and, and shutting it down, and Auburn gets a sweep. And the thing that I love now is Auburn is in a good position to get a top four seed in the SEC tournament and then to potentially be able to host a regional as we get to postseason. you got four SEC series left, and this team was – was voted by the by media to be worse than the SEC. We're talking about them possibly hosting a regional. Yeah. You'll love to see yep. it. Yep, and fighting for a top four seed uh, in the SEC tournament up in Hoover in a few weeks. Crazy, crazy. And boy, do they have their, uh, their work cut out for them over the next few weekends. We'll talk about that in just a second. But let's look at the sweep. You mentioned the bullpen. Obviously, huge weekends. Uh, of, for for the uh, the bullpen, specifically Skipper and, and Burkhalter, but who else stood out to you? Who else made this sweep possible, Lindsay? So catcher Nate LaRue just went absolutely nuclear this week, and he's a guy that... Nuclear Nate? Nuclear Nate. Butch Thompson has talked about, as like this is the most he's gotten to be involved on a day-to-day basis in his college career, and as he has, like as he's been doing that, He's been getting better and better, whether it's offensively. His defense is getting even better. So this this weekend, four for eight, five RBIs, one home run, a double, a stolen base, and a defensive caught stealing, which I believe he's either six for eight on the season at catching base runners or eight for 10. But either way, you don't steal against Nate LaRue, which is not something that you can say for a lot of catchers in general. I think it... Right. In MLB, the success rate's around 30 or so percent on catching bait stealers. So him being at 75% is pretty nice. Delicious. Uh, just great weekend. Uh, calls a good game, gets the pitchers in a good tempo, and really is able to help them hit their marks, help them stay on pace, and help them get over the occasional bad or non-competitive pitch. Right. So huge part of the weekend was Nate LaRue. Yeah, that, that's exciting. What about, um, what about a pitcher? You want to single out a pitcher? From this weekend, you lobbed up the ball for me to crush it on Joseph Gonzalez. I you know can you talk did. About him. You can but talk about him. I say we 
we can share that, stat, share that stat that you told me before we started recording. Okay. So Joseph Gonzalez now has three consecutive starts of at least seven innings pitched with no walks. Stupid. He has pitched 24 innings in the last three SEC series with a total of four earned runs, no walks. He is already being a batter in the last month and being walked by Joseph Gonzalez. Cause I can't, I can't imagine that. Literally nobody knows what that feels like. Yep. It's crazy. Crazy. So even Jolene disagrees. So, but no, like, Joseph Gonzalez, and I've been talking about Gonzalez now for a year and a half. I feel like, I mean, like you've heard this from me. I do want to give props to Blake Burkhalter. And he's been in a position where he's had to throw three consecutive days. He threw on Tuesday. He got the win on Tuesday. So he's thrown in four games this week. Uh, but this weekend, three and two-thirds innings, one hit, no runs, seven strikeouts, and three saves, which gets, gives him 11 on the season, which leads the SEC in saves. That's crazy. That's Just, crazy. If, if you want to buy his shirt, by the way, closing time, aushirts.com. aushirts.com. It's actually really funny. He mentioned, he talked about that. So on Friday night, Friday was 90s night at the ballpark. So they're playing a bunch of 90s music and they play closing time from Semisonic uh, when he, you know, as he's warming up on the mound there to start the ninth. And he's like, you know what? We just put the shirt out. And then they start playing closing time in the ballpark. And I'm like, well, I can't screw this up now. And so he reaches back and pulls out 98, which he told me after the game, fastest pitch he's ever thrown in competition. That's awesome. Uh, to get the final out of the game uh, and, and, and seal game one for Auburn. So uh, as much as I want to give pitcher of the week to Joseph Gonzalez, because I obviously do, it's, it's Blake Burkhalter. Pitcher of the yeah. week. And you can get that closing time shirt at aushirts.com. Yeah, and I forgot that he pitched Tuesday too. I forgot about that. Um, why, why is he pitching midweeks? That doesn't make sense to me. So typically you want to give your pitching staff an opportunity to, to throw a bullpen midweek and Auburn was trying some different things, but ultimately did not want to lose that midweek game. And so they pulled him on, they, they brought him out on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, let him throw on. That was a surprisingly close game. If I remember right, that game actually went to extras. That Alabama State game went to extras. It was it was a walk. Nate Larue walk off. Nate, right? Nate, Nate, Nate Larue walked it off. So yeah. So they went to extras because 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 Blake Rambush uh, had the game tying hit in the bottom of the ninth. So yeah, Burkhalter came in to keep the game close. Typically, you wouldn't use your closer in a midweek. You'd let him throw a bullpen after the game, but they needed to use him because they didn't want to lose that game. When you're looking at RPI, you're looking at postseason seeding, every victory matters. And then for those midweeks, it's more important to not lose a midweek, especially to a team outside the top 200 in RPI like Alabama State was. They came in, they had a great game plan. Uh, they had a, a a pitcher that Auburn just couldn't pick up the the, the changeup on, and it, it worked out for them. But Auburn they were just excited, this week. Uh, they were excited about the D. Davis news from uh, the night before. Yeah, they they said, "Hey, we're getting D. Davis. We're going out. We're avenging our boy. Yeah, let's we're just take do this." Off. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, but no, Auburn's four and zero this week. And as you head into Tennessee and then Arkansas, uh, you're at a you're in a position where consensus is you need 18 conference wins to to be able to host a regional. So Auburn has to pick up, I believe, it's seven wins over the next four series. So you've got 12 games. You need to win seven. And if you generously assume that they're going to take one game from the national number one Tennessee and the SEC West number one um, Arkansas, who as of Sunday is number two in the rankings, then if they get one game from each of those, they can go five and one against Alabama at home and Kentucky on the road and hit that magic number of 18 before you get into the SEC tournament. That'd be wild. That'd be wild. And I, I just don't think... I just don't think they're going to get swept in Knoxville. And maybe I'm crazy. Seriously, may maybe I'm just ignorant to this. But the fact that they get Arkansas at home is going to be really, really exciting. That ballpark was very, very loud this weekend. I mean, I was there. Incredibly loud ballpark. Capacity crowd on Saturday. And Tennessee, whether we like it or not, Tennessee has looked vulnerable 
Uh, they were down to Florida today on Sunday as we record this. Um, they, I mean, they lost that that midweek. They dropped one of the three to Alabama. And so recently, ever since they swapped to Wood Bats for that one midweek game, they've looked a little bit more uh, unlike the Monstars and more just like a regular team. Yeah, so, a really good team instead of like a legendary team. Exactly. They've just looked like they're really good versus being the best baseball team to ever play the sport in college. Right. So, yeah, you pick up a game in each series, and Auburn could win that Arkansas series. You've got two weeks between now and then. A lot can happen, whether it's injury, whether it's ineffectiveness, whether it's just Auburn gets hot and goes out against Kentucky. But if you can pick up two of those, and then you can sweep one of those two series, win the other one, you're, you're hosting a regional. That'd be wild. That would be a crazy thing to see. Lindsay, how can people find you, hear you, read you, support you, all that good stuff? I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. My show, Locked on Movie Prospects, is available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. You can find it on Twitter. Send your questions in uh, there at Locked on Farm. And then my writing, obviously, AuburnDaily.com. The Auburn baseball piece for, uh, from the weekend is already up. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And you, once again, support these baseball players. Go to AUShirts.com. We'll be back tomorrow for a little Charlie Tuesday action right here on Locked on Auburn. See ya.